Is that better? There we go. Try that again. Good morning, church family. Good to see you all here this morning. Appreciate the presence of you all. Uh, we are having a, it's a good crowd today, and so I'm glad to see many of us are back. Many of us are back from vacation and, and things like that. Some of us will be, some of you will be having to go and start your uh, getting ready for uh, school on Monday, and so we want to make sure y'all know that we're thinking about y'all in that atmosphere, in that aspect. We we are thankful for for teachers, which is why a lot of reasons why in August we we tend to focus a little bit on on school and our teachers and our students. And so, in the next couple of Sundays, uh, uh, our, our family night is all about getting supplies together for the, the grade school kids and having enough so we don't go out. And um, we, um, we 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 mentioned that uh, you know we would take uh, money. And, uh, and, and use that money to buy supplies. And uh, it turns out Bald Prairie Church of Christ heard about it. And uh, they wanted to help. And so uh, we, got a, we received a check from Bald Prairie Church of Christ uh, last week uh, for a very, very well collected amount. And uh, we're going to use that also to purchase more supplies now. So it's really good. And we, I want to just make sure that Bald Prairie, and we, if, you, if you, you know some, many of you worship there, have family who goes there, have friends go there, make sure we, we need to make sure we tell them thank you for helping and participating with this uh, with this uh, family night we're doing, getting school supplies together. And then, of course, we also are going to be feeding the teachers uh, this month as well. Uh, we are going to do, you know, baked potatoes and all those things. And so we are always excited about uh, getting ready for that and uh, getting to know everybody who comes from the elementary and the middle school and the high school come over and we take a time to spend with them and want to say thank you for that. So and uh, if you want to help with that also, we would definitely love for you to participate in all these things as well. So um, uh, it's good to be knowing that school is about to start again for another year. And we want to make sure that uh, we are asking God to bless our teachers and bless our students as well. <clears throat> I did a wedding this weekend, and uh, it, um, it wasn't, um, uh, it was a member of, uh, of our community, uh, the Lilly family. Now, Tiffany and Eric Lilly, I performed their wedding ceremony. Um, I, I also helped them out with their, I did their premarital counseling, which was part of the, part of the thing. And uh, when we got there to do the wedding, of course, everybody made their introductions. And, uh, you know, Tiffany introduced her side of the family, and Eric introduced uh, their, his side of the family. And then they, you know, they, they said, and this is our minister, Bland, who, who uh, we, when we get a chance to get off work, because they work, I mean, they, they work nonstop. You know, we, he, he's, he's our minister. And... Um, when that happened, I, I was dressed casually. I had on a you know, polo shirt, nice pair of jeans, wearing my boots. And, when, and, and everybody else kind of just talked and looked at me and treated me normal. But when they said, this is Bland Crane and he's our minister, everybody's faces and facial expressions changed. And all of a sudden, I was looked at differently. And... I have a hard time with that. I, I don't know why, but I really do. Um, and, and it's not because I get uh, just, uh, though they act different around me, and they, and they, and they, don't, they're not, they don't, they don't act normal, I guess you could say. And uh, while I, yes, I am a minister, I, I, I still battle or struggle with the idea that I am no different than anybody else out there um, I still have the same struggles I still breathe the same air I still have the I'm you know I'm, I'm a father I'm a I'm a I'm a dad I'm a uncle I'm a, I'm a son I'm a grandson I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a grandson you know I, I I'm still the same old bland but what happens is is that nine times out of ten you know it it, 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 it really ha it happens a lot is that when someone learns that I'm a minister, the first thing they want to say, they want to do this is, hey, let me pick your brain about something. Okay, sure, fire away. And normally, I get some very 
average questions. But then every once in a while, I'll get some who the questions they want my opinion on are things like, what do you think about the rapture? Or, uh, what do you think about the, uh, the Shroud of Turin? And I just kind of smile and say, well, you know, I'm just, I, don't, I don't see that in the Bible. Oh, I, I didn't ask you what you thought about what, what it says in the Bible. I want to know what you think. I want to know what your opinion is. And so I kind of work my way through it, but then I, it, I, just, I can't help myself. I always go back and I go, well, the Bible says. But yeah, but, but I'm not asking what the Bible says. I want to know what your opinion is. And then finally I have to smile and say, well, <laughs> I, I know this may sound a little simple, but the Bible is my opinion. And that should be the, and really, that should be the status of us all. As we look at 12 scriptures this year that we should all should take the heart, we're going to look at Romans 10, 14 through 17 today. And that idea about those kind of conversations, I don't know if any of y'all have those kind of conversations, but it's very difficult for me to want to or try to separate my, well, because like I said, my opinion is or I try to live my life and practice my my religion by understanding that my opinion is what the God's is is what the God's word is, because it's amazing that while there are Bibles galore, there are Bibles. There's probably Bibles in everyone's house. You can download a Bible onto your, your computer. You can put it on your phone. Still, though, there are many things in the Bible that not many people know about. And so when they bring up contradictions, my first response is, well, the Bible says. And they go, oh, it says that in there? Yeah, it's right here. And sometimes I, I, I'm able to show them. Sometimes I have to do a search myself. Which I humbly say, I'm, you know, I'm not proficient in that yet, but I'm still working on it. But every, it, it's so fascinating how everybody virtually has access to the Bible, but it's not very much used or read. The importance of God's Word. The, uh, the, the idea of how, how powerful it can be and how useful it can be does not... It, it, it's, well, it, it's more, never more um, reiterated then in the pages of Romans 10, 17, where it says, Faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So what does it mean to actually hear the message? We, it was prayed that, I, that, that, uh, that, that my lesson, would, my sermon would be heard. And while, yes, I am thankful that that prayer was prayed, and I'm, I'm grateful that y'all pray for me when I'm about to get up and preach, I really want to make sure that it's clear that my message, I don't want my message to be heard. I want, my desire should be, and what I hope every all y'all's desire should be, is I want what the Scriptures said to not only be heard, but to be understood. And so... When we talk about Romans 10, 17 and, and making sure and, and us understanding that this is one of those scriptures that we should take to heart and know. The first thing we have to do is simply we have to know it. Why? Because God's Word must be heard. And so we have to know it. Romans 10, 14 declares, How shall they believe in Him, believe in of whom they have not heard? Proverbs 29 uh, Verse 18 says, Where there is no vision or an open understanding of things, the people will perish, but he who keeps the law is blessed. And in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it declares that faith is the result of hearing God speak through 
God's Word. And so the Word of God produces a lot of things. And, and, it, and it produces faith in matters of... It produces, first of all, it produces faith in matters of salvation. And so if you really want to have an understanding and a faith-built understanding of what it means to be saved and what salvation and the plan of it means, then you have to read it. You cannot just say a prayer or, 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 or hear an opinion. The Bible is that important. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 17-18 said, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, let, the, let at least the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Listen to this, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I can't tell you how many times I've heard about... Now, Blaine, you really don't believe that a man died and was put in a tomb and then three days later he came... Yes, that whole... The Jesus doing the, the great things and saying all that. Hey, man, yeah, I'm in that. But, I mean, really? Dying and then coming back from the dead? That's, that's very far-fetched. Into a lot of ways... I can see how that would be foolish. How that would be foolish. But, and it's in those times that sometimes as a minister, I get the feeling that sometimes I feel like, well, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more about, I'm in sales. Or I'm, 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 I'm in promotions. And while that's very important, and in, in, in some ways I can, you know, some people say, well, well yeah, Blaine, in a lot of ways you do sell. The, 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 you do sell religion. You do promote religion. But when I really think about it, I need to understand it, and I ask for help to remember that in my heart of hearts, I'm not supposed to get the word out. But in essence, I'm really supposed to let the Word out. Philippians chapter 2, verse 16 says, As you hold out the Word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. And so the Bible produces faith in matters of salvation, but it also produces uh, faith in the matters of growth. In matters of growth. A, a minister kept a kept a journal about his personal uh, his personal studies and his things. And he wrote when he wrote in his journal one time. He said, "I prayed for faith, and throughout this, uh, and, and and thought that that someday faith would come down and strike me like a lightning bolt. But faith did not seem to come. And then one day I read in the tenth chapter of Romans. Now faith has come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And I closed my Bible." And I prayed for faith. And now I open my Bible and begin to study. And he ends this day, this journal by saying, And faith has been growing ever since. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped in every good work. We cannot... You cannot... I, I, this, I believe that you cannot go any further in studying the Bible with someone until the two of you come to an understanding about what First Second Timothy three sixteen actually says. It actually says what is in this book, the Bible that you have in your hands, the, the, the Bibles that we hand out when someone gets baptized, the Bible that you downloaded onto your phone or on your tablet. That book is God-given, God-breathed, and can be useful for many, many things. And until two people who are trying to study or trying to learn more about God actually come to an understanding that that is the starting point of understanding what it means to understand what God's Word is, I don't see how someone can go any further. 
This book is, is, is powerful. It's powerful. Every Christian, I mean, this is a, I may be too simple of a statement, but every Christian not only should own a Bible, but should read a Bible. How many times have someone said or thought this? The guy's here is praying, Lord, please talk to me. And the clouds open and God hands him a book. It's the Bible. How many times has that has 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 people have said that? I just wish the Lord would just would just would just you know tell me what He wants me to do. Read the Bible. I just wish the Lord would just sit there. I wish the Lord would just tell me what I should do about this situation. Read God's Word. Man, I, I just want to be a better husband. I want to be a better spouse. I, I, I want to be a better employee. I, 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 want, I want my business to succeed. I wish God would tell me what to do. Read your Bible. We, we don't read our Bibles enough. And I'm as guilty as the next person. Instead, we, we, we get dressed up and we come to Sunday services and it just, we're just going to sit back and hear what the preacher has to say. That's not enough. It never was designed for the, the, God's Jesus' new idea of a new congregation, something brand new, was not about us sitting back in a pew and listening to what the preacher had to say. That's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation in fear and trimming. You have to study. Why? Because I'm imperfect. I'm infallible. I know you might find this hard to believe, but I might mess up. I might say the wrong thing. I might, I might need to be correcting. And believe me, there are people out there who are not afraid to do so. But the point is, is that it's up to you and the Bible and the Bible alone. Do not try to get to heaven on the coattails of my sermons. Please do not do that. I beg you. We have to study. Every Christian should own a Bible, should read a Bible. Why, why, do, why does Hallmark still make the money that it does? Hallmark greeting cards. They make money out... The, they just make tons of money. And uh, Valentine's Day is, is a big one. Birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas. Why do we send cards to people still? In this day of technology and phone calls and emails and, 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 and Skype, why do we still put pen to paper and send a card to the person that we love? Because people enjoy receiving those kind of things. Because the card that we get is means, hey, I received this from someone who thinks I'm special, who thinks I'm important. We still like to get greeting cards. We send cards to people that we love because the cards speak thoughts of him or her or them. So if we love Jesus, shall we also, shouldn't we also love His Word? His greeting card? Because it speaks to us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Do you not realize that the voice of God is in your hands? And I feel bad when people don't read the Bible daily simply because they are depriving themselves of the strength and the pleasure of knowing what God wants them to do. Acts chapter 17 verse 11 says, The Bereans were far more of noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the Scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Other books were given for us for information. The Bible was given for our transformation. And so when you hear or when you read God's Word, you must constantly be asking yourself, is it talking to me or is it talking about me? 
The Word of God must also be believed. The Bible must be believed, and it also must be received, which means we have to stow it away. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living, and it is active, and it is sharper than a double-edged sword, and it penetrates even, even the dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. This, 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 this Word of God is so sharp. It's a precise, specific type of weapon, and a weapon that can be used so when you are cut, you can be healed. When you are cut down deep, the cut is so precise that there is healing and there is able to move on from that. A person can read his Bible every day of their life. And they can go through the, the pages and they may, may be unaffected and unchanged by its power. But unless that person is willing to believe it and to receive it. In other words, just going through the Bible and saying, well, I read my Bible for a year, I must be doing pretty good. Did you stop and contemplate it? Have you stopped to really meditate on it? Someone once said, Bland, I don't know why I keep doing the same things I keep doing. Because the Bible says, don't merely read the Bible. It says, do what it says. You want to stop lying? Read the Bible. You want to stop using bad language? Read the Bible. The simple things, the things that we struggle with every day, temptations, lying, stealing, cheating, uh, uh, bad attitudes, anger. I believe if you've... Re I've said it before, and, and I know I'm, I'm sounding like a broken record. You start every day praying, you end every day praying, see how your week goes. Take a, a passage of Scripture each day. Just a passage from the Proverbs, from the Psalms, from New Testament or Old Testament. And apply it. Don't just memorize it. Apply it. And see if that problem goes away. Now, why? Because God's Word is that powerful. God's Word is that powerful. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 says, We also thank God continually because when you received the Word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the Word of men, but as it, it actually is. The Word of God, which is at work in you who believe. The Bible was not given... To us to increase our knowledge and thus make us feel like we're something that we're not. The Bible was given to us for one simple purse, one simple thing, and that was to change our lives. To change our lives for the better. For the better. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom and as you sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart of God. And so the word of God must be shared. In other words, you have to sow it. Sowing it means, you know, plant it. Like in the olden days, broadcasting out there, throwing, scattering the seed. Are you sowing the seeds of the? Are you sowing the seed? I, I always thought that was a funny song when I was little. Are you sowing the seeds of the kingdom, brother? Because I thought it was kingdom brother, not kingdom brother. But anyway, that's not the point. But you have to sow it. Colossians three sixteen. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach. And women, right. Romans ten. 14 and 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can, they, how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet who bring good news. There was a preacher who was called to the hospital. Someone, one, of their, one of his members was, was sick and got, had to go to the hospital. And so he gets in his car and he, he drives up there. And when he gets there and he's walking down the hall and there's nobody else in this hallway, all of a sudden, <clears throat> this young man comes running out of a room. And he's running down the hall. 
And he's yelling at the top of his lungs, she's going to make it. She's going to make it. And, he, and she runs up to the preacher and hugs him and lets him go. And he smiles and he says, she's going to make it. And then she lets go of him and keeps running down the hall, yelling at the top of his lungs, she's going to make it, she's going to make it, she's going to make it. And the preacher didn't know who, the, who in the world that guy was. But the man didn't, but obviously the guy who was very excited about whoever she was was so thrilled to hear the news that that person was going to overcome, get over, be better. That he didn't care who he ran into, he didn't care who hurt him or who didn't hear him, he didn't even care what people thought about him because somebody. I, Somebody had to say, boy, it was wrong with that guy running down the hall yelling, she's going to make it, she's going to make it, she's going to make it. He didn't care. The, the good news affected him so much. And apparently, it, apparently someone was either near death to, and, and that person was very dear to him. The point is he couldn't wait to share it. He didn't, even, he didn't even have to know who the person was to hear it. It just flowed out of him because he had received good news. And in case you haven't figured out, good news deserves demands to be shared. Acts chapter 4 verse 20 says, For we cannot help speaking about what we've seen and what we've heard. Many years ago, there was a man who, who collected violins. He, he, he loved the way the violin sounded. And he had a, he had a quite extensive collection. And he had all kinds of, of, of violins, all different colors, all different shapes, all different designs from all different kinds of, 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 uh, of people who made violins. And I'm not an expert on that, so forgive me. When he died, they went through his house and they were cleaning out and they were taking all his violins and up in the attic in a box all by itself was a violin and it was known as a strata, strata you heard of it a Stradivarius a Stradivarius violin is probably one of the most beautiful violins that you ever heard played I've never heard a Stradivarius played but this guy had a Stradivarius in his attic collecting dust. It hadn't been played for over a hundred years. And this guy had it in his attic not being used. How many of Christ's people are like that fella who collects things and then sticks the most valuable thing up in the attic to collect dust? In our very love of church, we fail to give glad tidings to the world. We don't have zeal for the truth and we forget to publish it. When are we going to learn that good news needs to be cherished and good news needs to be told for all the people to hear? The good news needs to be not just cherished, but needs to be told. All people need to hear it. Finally, God's Word. The Bible must be lived. When I blame how you live the Bible, well, you show it. You show it. The value of the Bible is not knowing, but not just knowing it, but obeying it. Knowing the Bible has little benefit. It has little benefit unless you practice it. It's like any other tool. If you don't go out and practice your shooting skills before hunting season, you're probably not going to bag your limit or get that big trophy buck. Even the best marksman in the world will tell you you still have to practice. Knowing the Bible is, has little benefit unless you practice it. James 1, 22 says, Do not merely listen to the Word. This is another verse you should mark down in your Bibles. Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. I can't make it any plainer than that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, And we also... But 
Spiritual maturity comes by compliance with the known will of God. And so the best thing to do with the Bible is to know it in the head, stow it in the heart, sow it in the world, and show it in the life that you lead. This morning, if there's anyone here who would like to respond to the invitation, it is yours. The invitation is for all. It's not just for those who want the prayers of the church. We, we, we love nothing more than praying for those who need our prayers. It's, and, and, the, and, and the invitation is especially for people who made today's the day you want to take on Christ in baptism. We would love nothing better than for you to come forward and we take your confession in the water and we baptize you and you walk a new life as a new Christian. The invitation is for each and every one of you. The invitation is for those who are having a hard week who may be struggling. The invitation is for those who, are, who have had a blessed week and would have nothing better than to say, God has really helped me this week and I would love to tell somebody about it. The invitation is for those who say, one more week. This week. I'm giving one more week to the Lord and I will glorify Him and honor Him in everything that I do. One more week. If you want to respond to the invitation, please make it known as we stand and as we sing.